today's bikes all the time. Nothing else we did mattered, but when we were all riding, that's like, that's what made this place dope. When your life revolves around biking, that's all you want to do. You kind of just put yourself out there and just get after it. I'm not the most focused person ever, but when I'm on a bike, nothing else matters. It's me and the trail in front of me. It's silent, I'm just riding. And when you feel like one with your bike, you don't have to think about what you're doing. That's when you know you're ready and everything's just clicking. It just feels natural to me and that's when I'm focused. It's literally silent. I hear my bike and my tires, and that's it. Nothing else in the world matters at that moment. I'm Ardog from Aptos, California and I'm a professional mountain biker. I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at in my career without, you know, my buddies that all kind of grew up here and just progressed together and we dug together. Like our lives literally revolved around bikes and there was no calling, no texting. We would just all show up at the same spot at the same time, because it was like a little hub for us. And yeah, next thing you know, there's, you know, 10 dudes that they're all professional mountain bikers. And that's all we did is just road bikes. Right, right down, right on the chutes? Okay. <laughs> My name's Lisa Cardoza. Um, I'm Ryan Howard's mom, or as I always tell the pe other people that I was his first sponsor. So. <laughs> It was a few years into it. I mean, I completely supported it because I thought it was awesome and I knew he just was passionate about it. So I would probably say when he was about 15 or 16 years old, I sent him up to a camp in Whistler and at that point those guys said, hey, this guy's got some skills. So then I knew it was something I had to support. He does everything 100%. So when he decided he wanted to be a mountain bike rider, it was 100%. And so I knew he was going to be put all his energy and his passion into that, and I think when anyone does that, they're successful, so. The cool thing was the Aptos environment with mountain bikers was so big when he started, and they were great individuals, and the parents were awesome, so it just, um, there was a lot of support there, and we saw obviously other riders around here become successful as well, so I always told them, be a kid as long as possible, because once you become an adult, it's no fun anymore. I didn't really realize he'd still be riding his bike at 34 years old. I hope he just keeps doing it. I had a lot of idols growing up as a kid, and luckily enough, they all lived in my town. Cam McCall, Greg Watts, Jamie Goldman, Tyler McCall, Alex Ravellis, they, they were all like my go-to riding buddies, but those were the guys like pushing the sport at the time. I kind of just like watched them and learned, and then I kind of got in the mix a little bit, you know, like I kind of put my head down and was like, this is what I want to do because watching those guys, I know it's possible. 
to make a career out of this bike riding thing. And it still doesn't feel like a job. I'm lucky enough it is, but it's still pure fun for me. And I'm super passionate about it. I couldn't see myself doing anything else. I've actually never told Ryan to be safe, ever. Like when he goes, rides his bike, his motorcycle, whatever he's doing, I never say be safe. I always say have fun. I'll be more nervous about him driving around town in that Nancy vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah, this is kind of just my old shed slash junk shed. Like old helmets and bikes and yeah, I don't know. But definitely some sick old bikes in here. Like that one I filmed in the no on in like 2015, maybe 2016. Um, that was a Rampage bike from back in the day. I think I won a whip off on this one. It's like a Hawaiian t-shirt paint job. Yeah, pretty crazy. Like this is a 26 inch bike and that's a 26 inch bike. It's like, I don't know. To ride that bike these days would be so outdated, it'd be crazy. Oh yeah, this is the sickest helmet I've ever had, I think. There's like a Bob Hanna, like Yamaha replica. Little ride or die hit on there. Yeah, that one needs to be hung up on the wall. <laughs> Feels like a shoebox. Those things are so thin. That is not safe. It should not have been riding downhill in that kind of helmet. That's insane. Oh, the old Howard sticker in the Vans font. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt, number three, but I threw a little C3 on there. Our dog in the Ford logo. <laughs> I mean, that's the kind of stuff that I'll have forever. Like, I'll never sell it. It's worth more to me than any amount of money, really, because it tells a story. Perfect. Cool. I'm hyped on that if you are. Um, move on. Yeah, so this is the old post office lot here. Obviously it's a bunch of condos and a parking lot and the grocery store, but this is literally where I grew up, was this dirt lot here. and. You know, we have a huge forest right behind us that we go, you know, trail riding in and whatnot, but 
This was the Mecca. This is the hot spot for mountain biking. For Aptos and even for dudes all around the world, like they would come here in the winter and get away from the snowy Norway or wherever they were from. And we all just grouped up here. Some of the best sessions I've ever had with 20, 30 people, just constant laps on laps on laps. And all the neighbors here up and down this whole road were super supportive. Um, I still see them all the time. And we, yeah, we're still good buddies with a lot of these people. And they would, you know, have barbecues and never complain. Like we, we would have cars just stacked up in the corner there and music going and they would give us water to like tune up the jumps. It was like a very supportive community in Aptos here for the whole biking stuff. You know, it was, it was never like given to us as a plot of land, like, hey, go build jumps here. We were just kids and we were just messing around in a dirt lot. And the county came in and they're like, hey, we're gonna make this like a legal thing. We don't know how long it's gonna last, but you guys seem like you know what you're doing. Like, run with it. And we got a bonus eight years from when you know we kind of thought it was going to get torn down but then the building company Barry Swenson went in and they're like hey like we're going to develop this land but in the meantime go for it it was just time you know we knew it wasn't going to be around forever but when we had it here it was game on i'm not embarrassed to say it. i i cried i and i wasn't the only one i was like I felt like I lost a friend. It was, you know, it was, it was the end. We, we knew it was gonna be the end. It was insane. I miss it every day. But, you know, you just gotta think back and appreciate what that place gave you and this town and all my friends. It was, it's literally why I have my friend group and where I'm at today in my riding career. If it wasn't for post office, who knows what this place would be or what I would be doing. You know, one thing I think um, with I think with any athlete that travels, I think traveling teaches you a lot of things. I think the other cool part is that Ryan has met so many people in so many different parts of the country and the world, and I think that shapes that's really shaped him. Yeah, I never thought I'd be able to travel to New Zealand or France or yeah, I didn't. I've learned a lot from traveling and it's crazy to think that a bike took me to these to these places with my friends like people work their whole lives to go to New Zealand you know and I'm just like oh cool yeah New Zealand sounds dope like let's go ride there that sounds sick 
and yeah, I, I mean, I, I owe a lot to my bike. I don't, I don't really care about trophies and stuff like that. I'd rather have like, you know, this is my bike from, you know, 2016 when I did Rampage. Like, that stuff still. But yeah, I never cared about winning. I knew I wasn't gonna win, but just being a part of it was, was good enough for me. And I'd like to think like, I kind of progressed as the bikes progressed a little bit. Like once trail bikes got better, I saw myself riding trail bikes more because I'm not a huge fan of like riding down, hiking back up. Then you're only riding for like, you know, 10, 20 seconds. I want to ride for like minutes. That's when I feel at home, when I'm like gassed after a ride. travel to New Zealand or Spain or I definitely get stoked to come home just because I know the riding's gonna be good my my group of friends is gonna they're gonna be here nothing's gonna change it was a small town living but it's still Aptos it's still home to me I'd be stoked to give back to mountain biking. I'm not a brainiac, I suck at a computer, but I know mountain biking. I want to see the sport progress and I want to see kids get better and I want to see more people riding. And if I can grow the sport of mountain biking, I did my job. <laughs>